Hello, tonight we're going to look at chapter one, and this is going to be an overview of clinical phonetics. In your book, it's pages one through four, and if you will follow along with this video and also have your PowerPoint, chapter one, the overview of clinical phonetics brought up as well. Um, I just want to give you some key points to touch on in this short chapter. So when we talk about phonetics, we're talking about the study of perception and production of speech sounds. And clinical phonetics is divided into two main domains. The first one is going to be informational, and that's going to be the seeing or the visual information um, or informational parts of the sounds. It's a very important clinically that you understand uh, the informational side of clinical phonetics because it really helps guide you with choices for therapy. Um, you're going to get, excuse me, lots of information to help you not only assess, but also treat your patients. So one great example, I love this one in the book, talks about you really have to look at what you're um, hearing and not focusing on what you're seeing when we talk about clinical phonetics. So perfect example, you're a speech pathologist, you're assigning some words for your patient to say, so you're going over them, maybe in a drill activity, and you assign base, right? And we're working on final S. So we have base, we have face, and we have hose. What's the problem? Well, the problem is, even though hose ends in an S as the actual letter S, the sound that that S is making is actually a Z which is completely different than if we're working on S, okay? Because S is voiceless and Z is not. So we want to be really careful when we're picking sounds like this for our patients that we're looking at not what you see, but what you hear, okay? The second part of this, the second big domain is going to be perceptual. So the other part is, yes, you want to know what sounds you're using, but you also want to be able to, to, to discriminate. Um, did the child say this sound or that sound? And that takes some fine tuning in practice. So you, with this perceptual um, domain, it's really looking at the hearing or the perceptual parts of the sound, and that's when we start talking about discrimination. It's a very complex process. And luckily, you guys have a wonderful um, table in your book. It's table one, I think, uh, excuse me, figure 1.1, and it's a little cube. So we're going to go through that cube, and it does kind of help break down all the different complex levels of phonetic transcription. So let me switch to the next slide. So this will be slide three. We're going to talk about system complexity. And the way we're going to do that is by going through each layer of this cube in figure 1-1. So the bottom row of this cube, where you see the 1, the 3, the 5, the 7, that bottom layer, um, the bottom row of the cube, that's going to be for two-way scoring. So two-way scoring is very right or wrong, black or white, uh, correct, incorrect, pass, fail. It's the easiest system and the most often used system. Parents can use this system. Um, other professionals could use this system. A little bit more complex, so if we go up um, on our cube, the second row is going to be for five-way scoring. So five-way scoring is the second tier of the cube, and it is not only right and wrong, but then also what type or what kind of error is being made. So you have five different ways of scoring. You have correct, and then you have four in you have four errors. They could either be deleted or omitted. So maybe the sound is deleted. So instead of pig, the child says p and deletes the g. You have substitution. So instead of pig, they use big. So they replace a b with a for the p. You could have distortion, so it's uh, distorting the sound, the target sound. Sometimes this happens with R. Um, and then addition, so you could also have 
um, where they say the sound correctly, but then they're also adding another sound as well. So that's going to be the five-way scoring. Um, so there's five different ways to score that. It's a little bit more complex. However, parents could still be trained this. Now the top tier of our cube, this is going to be something that um, really is just meant for clinicians. You need a lot of practice, um, and it's just not something that parents or other professionals would really be able to use. So this is why we get trained in it, because it's not something we can just teach someone. There, there's a little bit more to it, um, and that's what this course is going to help you with. So with phonetic transcription on the top row, rather than scoring um, a behavior, it's allowing us to describe the behavior. So it's not what the ch we're just talking about what is the child saying. We're not judging it. Um, so it's very different than the two-way scoring and the five-way scoring. Okay, now let's get now that we have the different types of complexity in the rows, now we're going to um, talk about the horizontal axis. We're going to do that through complexity. So if you go to the fourth slide in complexities, it talks about linguistic and response. So let's talk about linguistics first. In that horizontal row, if we're going to the far left, you're going to see an isolation. That means just one sound by itself. So if I'm looking at the word bus, I might only focus on, rather than the whole word, I'm just focusing on a B. Okay, so that's an isolation. It would just be B by itself. The next step would be in a word, so it might be uh, the, the entire word bus. In a sentence form, it might be I ride the bus. And then in conversation, it would be me talking about the bus, whatever I was saying about a bus. Um, so going from left to right, it's becoming more difficult, more complex. The response complexity, this is the third dimension that's added to the cube. And this looks at single sound focus and multi-sound focus. So, for instance, for single, excuse me, single sound focus, we're looking at, let's take the word bus again. So we might look at just the B in bus. So it may be an assessment that only looks at one particular sound in that word. Whereas a multi-sound focus would look at multiple sounds within that word. So maybe in the word basketball, we're looking at the initial B, but then we're looking at the medial S, or the S in the middle of the word. We're also working at the final L. So that would be the L at the end of the word. So it's multi-sound focus, multiple sounds that we're focusing on in one word. Okay? So that's the end of this PowerPoint. I tried to keep it pretty short with this video, but I do want you to go through the book, read through these uh, pages, and then also take the quiz. You will have seven days to complete this quiz, um, and the quiz will be posted next week, Tuesday. So we are going to wait a little bit for the quiz to be posted. It will be posted on Tuesday the 28th, and you will have until Monday, November 3rd, to complete it by 5 p.m., okay? If you have any questions, please submit them to the discussion board for Chapter 1, the Overview of Clinical Phonetics. Thank you.